Hey Rivals, welcome to Bax Attacks. Today we're continuing our base design series with a look at Stronghold Level 9. Although I am Stronghold 12 at present, I've not added in the buildings for Stronghold 10, 11, or 12. So what you see up top here is only the Stronghold Level 9 buildings and defenses, and they're not actually much upgraded past that. Now what you get at Stronghold 9 compared to Stronghold Level 8 is a troop portal, the all-important arrow launcher, a third spell tower, and a smelter, plus three walls. So this is basically a tweak off my um, Stronghold 8 design, and what I refer to this space as is the peanut. And by that we have a peanut-shaped area up top and on bottom, so it's got that hourglass shaped design, you can call it hourglass too, and on the sides are the crunchy shell that tries to protect the, uh, the peanut. And let me describe why I like uh, this space. We have the Primus Conduit down here with a lot of our uh, important physical damage buildings and the Skywatcher and Watchtower as well. The catapults are positioned next to the Stronghold so that they can reach and hit melee units that are attacking the Stronghold from the north. And up north, we have two important spell towers. The Flame Tower causes quite a bit of uh, damage, and the Insanity Tower really throws the troop in confusion. If you don't have that one, thank you, Trisha. If you don't have that one, a, a Purple Spell Tower is another good choice to avoid healing, or even a uh, Freeze Tower. The Watch Towers are also designed to be able to protect the Stronghold. we got three of those right nearby. They're also protecting from the, uh, the outside buildings from being sniped off. And then over on the right side, we have an extra spell tower that is preventing sniping on the right-hand side. Uh, if you'd like, you can definitely switch in the spell tower for one of the uh, catapults or something in, in here, or shift it out there, and then put the, the um, watchtower over in that direction. I have the watchtower here so that it can guard the stronghold uh, better. Then up top, well first of all I have the whole base in the corner so that there's not much room for the troops to deploy up here. And I have my three bigger buildings up top um, where again they're crowded in by the corner and I have a watch tower protecting that. So if the dragon tries to snipe the building up top, usually he will get hit by the, uh, the watch tower. And then these other buildings are protected as well nearby. So I'm trying to give up as little uh, free mind as possible with that. Now if they're careful in their deployment, See the watchtower here? It's kind of really close whether or not it covers that. It, it, it should. And then I used to have the gold and this uh, swapped, but then the gold was, was just uh, free gold and free mana. And so I put the spell tower on the outside. Even though that doesn't protect the, uh, the center better, it prevents the, uh, the sniping that I don't want to give up. Um, most troops will try to come in from the north. They don't like to face that, uh, the tough uh, bottom layer. And then even if they get through the bottom layer, they still have the um, spell towers reaching into there for any melee units, and these are in range of any wardens that would want to try to hit the um, stronghold. So this design has been working well, and what else I'd like to do is to go into the map editor mode and show two variations of this, and then to show uh, one other uh, base design within the, uh, within the kingdom. In a recent video, which uh, overviewed, Stronghold 9 through 13, I talked about the different uh, styles overall of base that, that you might see. The um, Southern Teaser, the, the bow tie base, the ring and double ring. And you just really don't have the walls to do most of those effectively at Stronghold level 9. So some variation of this kind of compact uh, core, leaving enough space for the Primus Conduit and protecting its mana is what you're going to see in, in most Stronghold 9 level bases. But let's go ahead and go to the editor and then um, make some, uh, some modifications here uh, to, to, to have a little bit of a different design. Okay, so here in the edit mode, I'm going to show the, uh, the first modification in what I would call a, a four box design. And in that one, see you've got the um, stronghold in the center. You basically have a box of uh, units all up here, another box there, and then we're going to turn what we're seeing over here into a, uh, a box structure as well. Uh, 
All right, so what this does is it puts these outer buildings right next to the Skywatcher, makes them even harder to uh, snipe, gets the things more uh, compact in there. And then we still have some extra um, walls, and we can choose to either um, fortify the, uh, the south down here. We can get a bunch of extra walls in there. Uh, we could put some more up top if we wanted to. Um, or you can add a little bit of an extra buffer layer on the sides over here. All right, so there's plenty of um, spare walls here because the, the box is a very tight, very compact design. So wherever you want some additional uh, buffering, you can do that. And because of the way you have the compartments in four kind of squares, you, uh, this is sometimes referred to as, as a four box design. And if you don't put it in the corner, you would definitely want to reinforce the um, uh, the upper area up here with some uh, with some walls. All right, so that would be the four box design for Stronghold of All Nine. Okay, and the next modification here is is going to be designed to address one of the shortcomings of the uh, peanut or the four box defense, and that is if the troops can break through here just through one set of walls, they are into a compartment that they can attack the uh, stronghold from. At uh, larger stronghold levels, that's why you have um, styles like the uh, double ring, where you have to punch through two levels of walls, two separate layers of defenses in order to get in there. And I saw on uh, Ash's nice video on Stronghold 9 and 10, one designed by uh, Mattia of Rival Elite. So I'm going to show a um, adaptation of uh, that base. We'll do that in a bit of a time lapse. Okay, in order to make a second layer of um, defenses and walls, there's really no option but to pull these walls back. Pull these defenses back. Okay, so the bottom looks something like that. Okay, so there we go. This is based on Madia's design, but it's not quite the same. I've kept the um, tucked in the corner location and I've kept the uh, sky watch. Um, watchtower up top protecting these large buildings instead of spreading them out uh, over outside here or here. But the key things to note here are as follows. You have a much tighter core, much smaller core. In fact, there's only two defenses on the Primus Conduit. That's the trade-off that you have to make to get a full second layer um, in order to get into, uh, into your core and stronghold. So in, or, in order for any troop to get to the stronghold, they have to break through two sets of walls no matter what direction they, they come from. And in order to do that, you have to give up something. And in this case, it's getting extra defenses on the um, next to the Primus Conduit. You still have nicely central um, spell tower here. You probably want your, your toughest one there or um, either a, a freeze or insanity or something to to slop, stop or slow down the troops. Got the uh, power launcher as centralized as we can, as are the two uh, catapults. The watchtowers are guarding the stronghold. They're guarding the um, troop portals a little bit here. If you're very careful, you might be able to snipe that out, but it's going to be close. This. Uh, Watchtower doing the same thing over on this side. We've got the bunker near the uh, stronghold and still covering a lot of the, the outer ring. And also, as troops come into this outer ring, instead of going toward the inside, they're going to work their way around the base instead of going central. And as they do that, they're just going to be coming into uh, range of the other uh, units here. So I think this is a pretty nice design. And this is where I really wish there was a... Um, 
an improved base editor where you could save and try different layouts because I would I would love to run with this one for a while and put in the time to, to make it here but I, I won't actually get to save it well you know maybe I will try it for a little bit the issue of course I still have all these other buildings and I'm going to be doing a uh, Stronghold 10 and 11 base design as well but maybe we'll try this one out for a little bit all right, so I'm just let me. If a tip here is in the uh, edit mode, to click on this eye icon, and you can see from there what your coverage is. So ignore that for a second. But basically, we have pretty good coverage on all the outside buildings. That sky watcher is a little bit um, short to cover the uh, that smelter properly. This guy is covering both of them. In fact, I wonder if we can do this. Is there room? Will that fit? He's still not completely covered. We can do this though, I think. There we go. All right, now we're, now we're truly getting uh, protection on that. That tavern doesn't give up any mana, so I'm not as concerned with protecting that one. Let's see, this guy. Let's move over here, get that a little bit better protected. And use it to buffer against the Skywatcher attack as well. Yeah. Also want to protect the spell tower. All right, so there's there's good coverage uh, overall throughout the uh, the base. So I think that's uh, that's going to be a fairly effective design. If you're stronghold level nine, maybe give that a try. And if if you do, let me know how that works out. That's the closest thing I think you're going to get to a kind of double wall uh, structure uh, with a slight down cost of not being able to have four units on the primus conduit. But you know, if if you're upgrading a lot of your defenses anyway then simply swap it in so that you have your two best ones here and an upgrading unit uh, elsewhere on the, uh, on the base. All right, we're gonna shift gears a bit and do a base redesign. This is a, another uh, base in the clan by Tesla. And as you can see, it's um, kind of uh, scattered. The units were just pretty much added as a new stronghold level and the base hasn't been redesigned since about uh, stronghold level five. Uh, what we're going to want to do here is to apply some of the, uh, the concepts for, for Stronghold 9. This one has uh, tons of uh, free mana, tons of buildings, the uh, spacing of the spell towers is poor, and the uh, Stronghold is just way off to, to one side. And here is the redesigned base. You'll notice that uh, Tesla wanted a combination of factors here for, for Stronghold Level 9 wanted the uh, Primus Conduit to have four defenses around it with the uh, Catapult and the Spell Tower next to the Stronghold. Some better spreading out in a triangle of the Spell Towers. Minimize the amount of free mana. In addition, went for a corner design where there's not much space to deploy troops. Uh, all guarded the uh, large buildings by that Watchtower. There is a ring structure for the outer defenses, those anti-air units that encourage the troops to go around the base and that protect from dragon sniping. Let's see, also there's uh, walls around here that try to funnel the, the troops around. The troop portals get some protection in there. And so coming in from the north, east, or west, there's two sets of walls to, uh, to get through. And there's some pretty good uh, defenses there in the in the core. And if coming from the south, both the bunker and the catapult from the top are covering the stronghold as well. So very nice redesign on this stronghold level nine. And here's the first defense uh, against an attack. And Tesla had not won any defenses in about three stronghold levels. So although powerful troops 
a, a higher stronghold is still probably going to um, take the base pretty easy. If the troops are equal level or less, you can see what's what's happening here. The troops are splitting up. There wasn't much room for the dragon to deploy. And the catapult and the other units are doing a good job of taking out the defenses. And then also the watchtower on the side is also offering nice protection against the strongholds and no attacker even got near it. So maybe not the best of attacks, but still getting a first defense is great. And that was actually followed by a second attack, and we have that one shared in, uh, in chat as well. So on this one, the dragon's taking the only free field in the other roost and sending the troops in from the top. And then the dragon sweeps over to help, and the troops are doing exactly what we hope for. They're going around in circles around the base. They're trying to come on the inside, but the combination of the flame ball tower and the catapult and the arrow launcher all on Primus Conduit are doing a great job at uh, doing a lot of damage to the, uh, to the troops. And just before the stronghold would be about to go down, the troops go down first. So going from no defenses on a kind of a random base to two defenses back to back with a new design. So I hope you guys have as much luck with uh, with your stronghold lines. If you have any questions on uh, on this level, love to hear them, and let me know if you have a favorite base. Thanks for watching.